All right, I'm gonna go. Is anybody up here? Fucking said you, you. Uh, so what? What do I think of Axel with ACDC? That's an interesting question. You're not the only one to ask me that. Now hold the fuck on. There are several ways to look at that situation. There are ACDC fans who are like, you know what? I just want to see them play for like the last eight, nine shows and then see what happens. There are other people who are like, fuck that. I don't like the way that fucking they handled the whole Brian situation, which I can totally see. However, none of us are behind the scenes. None of us know what's been going on. None of us know anything. And I learned that lesson with the Guns N' Roses thing. I mean, I'm talking about, I'm a huge Guns N' Roses fan. So when that whole thing started to kind of come back together, and I was like, eh. But then talking to some of them, I really saw the whole picture and was like, okay, I can get behind this. So I don't know enough about what is going on behind the scenes. I can certainly appreciate the fact that Angus wants to finish those, those shows. Because here's the thing you got to understand. He's been doing gigs since he was 17 years old. You know what I'm saying? He has been giving everything, and I mean everything he's fucking got, night after night after night after night for fucking 50 years. Who are we? Who are we to decide when it's time for ACDC to be done or not? Am I fucking right or am I fucking wrong? Is it gonna be the same? No, nothing's ever the same. I don't think it was the same after fucking uh, Phil left. So it's never gonna be the same. You know what I'm saying? For me, the biggest bum out for me is that Malcolm won't be a part of those shows. That's the saddest part of that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I feel bad for Brian as a singer, but the saddest part of that is that Malcolm won't be a part of those last eight shows. And he fucking should be. You know what I'm saying? That man has written every fucking song they did. So that's me, that's me, you know? I could go either way with it, but because I don't know a lot about it, I'm not gonna make any judgments. There'll be no follow-ups. They all have to be submitted in ink 24 hours in advance and only in Latin. You, sir. Oh, okay, okay, interesting. Yeah, the, you didn't hear that. The question was, how come on volume three, and come whatever may, my scream was higher? And there's a very simple reason for that, because I'm a fucking mental person, <laughs> and I, I don't want to say get bored easily, but I look for different challenges, even sometimes if there isn't one there. And for me, I was kind of starting over on volume three anyway, because that's right around the time I quit drinking for the first time. So everything was really fucking fresh and really new, and I was kind of trying to get my life together, and, and the, more to the point to where I am today. And for me, I was trying different vocal styles. Now in retrospect, it was a terrible idea. No, I, trust me. It was, uh, it was actually harder on my voice to do the, the shriek scream than it was to do the guttural stuff. I didn't know that, because I'm not a fucking doctor. <laughs> and then I went to a doctor, and he's like, oh, look at that. Oh! Now, mind you, I've got a scope in my throat, and I'm like, what is that? He's like, ooh, it doesn't look good. And I'm like, what is that? Sorry, it's a long scope. I see where you're going, you perverts. <laughs> um, so I kept doing it, you know, I, with Come Whatever May, it was just kind of a part of what I did. And at the time, I was, act I was actually kind of on the fence about maybe trying to go back to that older style. Um, and what I decided on was kind of an amalgam of the both. You know, we're trying to do like a, a deeper, higher one, the same type of approach and not going completely back to the guttural stuff. Kind of trying to play in between the two. And that's kind of what I do today. Um, because A, it's not nearly, <coughs> sorry, 
fucking, that thing was there. And it was just like, you're not going to get through this. You let me out now and we'll be friends. If you don't, I'm puke. Uh, so I, uh, you know, to me, it, it wasn't as hard on my throat. And I was a actually able to kind of keep my throat together, my voice together longer because of that. So um, those two albums vocally were experiments, you know. Uh, well, I mean, they, 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 well, thank you. Uh, to me, it's, it's hard for me to listen to because I can hear the straining, you know. Um, but that's not to say that I would ever change anything. Like, I would totally fucking have done the same thing because it helped me get here today, you know. So, thank you. Good question. Anybody else? You do. <laughs> now, how do I feel about that? Oh. oh, is there one? Okay. I don't know if you heard the question. She asked, is there one particular song that I would like to see Donald Trump use? <laughs> There's really only one. And it's not so much Custer as it is Disaster Peas. Yeah, that's gonna give me points. I didn't, okay, I got part of that. I couldn't have said it better myself. All right, please. So what song's live? Oh, interesting. Are there any songs live, playing them live, that, we, that, that caused problems that didn't in the studio? Is that what you're saying, basically? There's a, there's, I mean, there's a couple songs that, anybody in a band will tell you this, there's always a couple of songs that are fucking great killer album tracks, and then you play them live and you're like, hmm. I don't know about that one. Um, there, I mean, it, honestly, honestly, it depends on the audience, to be honest, because there are times where when we've come over here and we've played uh, multiple fucking songs off of Iowa and the, the audience has gone ape shit, and it's like, oh fuck, that's a keeper! Here we go! And we go to America and they're... <laughs> you get the fucking, you know, people you know, that... I like to call them the snuff section. <laughs> it's true. They're kind of just waiting for snuff. <laughs> and they gotta sit through. I'm gonna slit your throat. <laughs> Fuck the wound. Yeah. They're like, we can't flow dance to this. I'm not saying it's here. I'm saying it's in the, it's mostly in the States, but it's, so it, it really kind of depends on your audience, you know? Like you kind of, like sometimes, like, like with the, the last tour we did, every one of those fucking songs went over the shit, right? And then we hit the States and it was just kind of like, oh, there's a dead spot there. What the fuck's happening? What the hell's fucking happening? And then you play the hits, well, the quote unquote hits, and they're like losing their shit. And then they just kind of fucking sit back down again. It's like, oh, fuck you! You know? You're doing disaster piece, you want to pull your fucking head off and kick it in the audience. And they're just kind of like, oh, it was really well played. That was good. <laughs> so it kind of depends, you know? I'm going to do two more. You, dear. Yes, you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. As far as my influences go, who am I closer to, Roger Waters or David Gilmore? That's a ooh, that's a tough question, to be honest. And I tell you why, because I I love Roger Waters because of his overall and his songwriting. But there is no one on this planet who has a tastier, creamier guitar playing style on tone than David fucking Gilmore, man. 
This is, this is no shit. My favorite two solos in the world are his solos on Comfortably Numb. They are so, like, I'm, just, I'm thinking about it right now. If you can see my skin, I have goosebumps. They're so fucking amazing, and he's one of the few people who I haven't seen live yet. So I'm fuck. well, oh, who fucking I have? I just wanted to ask you a question so I could say, fuck you. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a split because Roger is a genius, but Dave is also a genius. So it's, it's kind of like, like only having one influence. I've never only had one. I've had so many influences that it's, I love them both for you know, who they are, you know? All right, one more, one more. Who's good? Yes. You. You came from Denmark? Jesus Christ. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay, man. What, what's your question? Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I get asked this a lot, and uh, people always ask me if I'm going to do more of these solo acoustic shows around the world, not just Europe and, and Scandinavia, but around the world. And the answer is yes, I'm going to do. I'm looking at certain times in the future where I can do an expanded tour, not just of the UK, which I would really try to hit all over the fucking place, um, but also Europe. Um, it, it, it maybe even try and do Russia if I could get up there, you know? If they'll have me. I mean, I, I'm not exactly Pussy Riot, but I'm not exactly fucking... I have to play the Beatles back in the USSR? First of all, don't tell me what to do. And secondly, that's a really great idea. Thank you. All right, I tell you what, one more, and then that's it. You. I'm sorry? Oh, Burbank 3. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't know if some of you knew this. Uh, we were putting out covers EPs with, with Stone Sour, and we had talked about doing three. What, the first one was Meanwhile in Burbank, the second one was uh, straight out of Burbank. And you wonder why three hasn't come out yet. The third one was supposed to be called No Sleep Till Burbank. Now, there are a couple reasons for that. Uh, three, well, first of all, I don't think we're going to release the third one. Hold on. Hold the fuck on. Because, honestly, Two came out so great that we kind of wanted to end on a high note. Now, we recorded the, co the covers, and we're going to mix them, but we are actually going to use them as extra material to promote the next album. So you will hear it. It's just going to be in different places, not all together. And who knows? Maybe at some point we'll come back and retroactively put No Sleep Till Burbank back together. So it's not coming out soon, but I guarantee you will hear the songs soon. Okay? I am going to take a piss, and I'm going to come back out, and we're going to sing the rest of the fucking night away. Does this sound all right to you? All right, give me some house music. Guys, I will be back in like two fucking minutes. Thank you so much. I fucking love you.